Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Bob's Woodshop. I'm here today with my buddy Bill Schaller of the New Jersey Woodturners, and he's going to show us how he makes these exquisite tops. So hang around for a little while. Say hi, Bill. Hello. All right, let's go. So what I'm going to show you how to do today is make a top with a iridescent finish. We do a nail polish style stuff. It's going to be great. All right. First thing we want to do, put a tenon on the top. Got my friend Bob here. Big stickler for the tenon on the top. The angle of the skew chisel is perfect for the Nova checks. Put that right in there. Go have a nice clean shoulder. Flash the end of it off just a little bit. We got a nice clean fit. And the reason we're doing this? This is so it doesn't hit you right in the face. Yep. You do not want to top to the face. It hurts just as much as a punch. Don't ask me how I know. Yep. Yeah, you really don't want the blank touching the jaws of the, um, the, the main jaws of the chuck. Otherwise, it'll be unstable. You want it pretty shallow. This yeah. doesn't uh, go too yeah, far the, in. You want the, the shoulders right on the on the Yeah, the, the tenon can't be any longer than the jaws length. All right, now the fun part. All right, we're going to flatten this off. Round it out. All right, now we're going to form the tip of the top. I'm going to use a 3 inch full gouge. About a 40 degree grind on it. As you get in towards the tip, you want to take lighter cuts get a good finish and a good tip. All right, now we're going to put some decoration on it. I'm just trying to speed down to around this is, this is Bill's arsenal of tools that he's using today. Yep. We're going to use a knurling tool first. It's going to go first. We're going to do that around the edge. Come in at an angle. All right, so that's step one. Step two, we're going to put a spiral on it. This is the uh, Sorby Mini Spiraling Tool. Spiraling Texture Tool. What speed are we going at? We're going about a thousand. Some people uh -huh. recommend you go slower with this, but I find it makes a cleaner finish if you go a little bit faster. I'm going to rotate the tool as I go. Get a little bit more of interest on the spiral. And a nice clean spiral heading out. Mm -hmm. And what I like to do at the tip is I like to put a little flower around the tip. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have the tool at a straight angle onto the blank, coming in at about 45 degrees. And we're just going to press in for a few seconds. And that forms a flower pattern. Yeah, it's pretty, it's not bad. It's, uh, I've definitely done cleaner than that, but we'll, we'll go with it. And then I'm going to accent these pieces with a point tool so we can set off those details and get a line in between. This is a, a D-Way point tool, basically. All right. Next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to set this up so that I can turn this around once I'm done finishing this side. And to do that, I'm going to get it down to a yeah. small size. So you're going to make a little tenon. A little bitty tenon, a little shoulder for it to fit. So I'm going to raise it to the rest a little bit. I 
check the size and make sure it's a good size. Okay. I think that's a good size. So that's a little shoulder and we're gonna clean up the, clean yeah. up the area around it. Again, we're, we're doing that so we can turn it around and so we can decorate the top of the top. This is a 3 8 beading and farting tool. All right, so that's the front of it done. And now we're going to do a little bit of decoration. Let's start off with really light sanding, 400 grit, high speed, just to get the burrs off around the details. I'm not really sanding it very. All right, we're gonna put some one pound cut shellac on this as a base coat. I like that. Especially when I'm doing any dyes, it keeps it from bleeding. In this case, I'm gonna color this with black, so it's not gonna make that much of a difference, but I still do it. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna brush on, brush on some black to have a base coat for my iridescent finish. Um, this is two pound cut shellac with mix all black pigment in it. And I'm applying this with a really garbage brush when Bill's talking about Mixol, he's talking about this little, this little dye. It's called Schwarz Black. Feeling cut. Feeling cut. Put this down to protect my banjo while I'm painting, and uh, I'm going to do the shellac on there. One coat should do it for the most part. We'll see. And the reason you're putting black on? I'm going to color this with an iridescent pigment, um, an iridescent mica, mica pigment that looks a lot better on a black background. And you can see the drips coming off. Mm -hmm. Did you have some art background or you've just been experimenting with this? No, I just like mixing stuff up, Bob. Okay. All right, we're gonna do a drying cut now. All right, so second coat goes on and it looks a lot darker. And at first you'll think it's hiding some of the details. Once the shellac dries, the details will pop back out of you. So what I have here is uh, what's called chameleon pigment. You can find chameleon mica pigment on uh, Amazon or art supply stores. And they use this for nail polish. Uh, that's one of the main uses of this. Uh, but it looks really good on tops. And what I do is I mix this stuff in one of these little empty nail polish bottles with um, two pound cut shellac. And I mix the shellac myself, uh, and it's about two ounces in a cup of isopropyl alcohol or ethanol. Um, but you want as pure alcohol as you can get. Uh, and this stuff, it takes a little while to dry. It doesn't dry super fast, but it dries fast enough that I can switch out uh, my chuck for a different blank, turn another top, and then when I put the other one back on, it's already dry. It's ready for me to, to continue finishing. Uh, so I find that this stuff, usually uh, one coat is enough. It's a good excuse to buy more chucks. It is a good excuse <laughs> to buy more chucks. You don't need fantastic chucks for this, but uh, yeah, it helps. Okay, so that's a nice, deep, rich, solid color now. And that's going to give us the great uh, palette that we need. All right, so these little brushes, I find they're good enough. They're not great, but they're good enough. Uh, you got to get real up close, so put your readers on if you're one of the older folks. And I like to turn the lathe in reverse when I do this. It just makes it easier because I can then put the brush right on top. I don't really have to mess around with angles. So two coats is usually overkill. I can usually get what I want to get done done in one coat of this stuff. But you can see it's already looking pretty good. It looks like uh, pretty nails. It's got that really cool shimmering effect. Yeah, it's actually two different colors depending on what angle you're looking at it in. So 
So tops like these are going to stand out from the from the crowd. And the nice thing about these pigments is it doesn't have to be perfect. You can get it good enough and it still looks great. Uh, blue, red, green color. So you can see the color kind of shifting as I as I change the angle. Mm -hmm. uh, it's chameleon. And I also put a little ball in the in the thing so that when I go to mix it back up, it uh, makes it easier to mix. So now I'm going to do the accents with this color. When you're talking about a ball, you're talking like a metal ball, or it's a little metal ball. So if you buy these uh, empty nail polish containers on Amazon, mm -hmm. they come with a little packet of balls intended for mixing up the pigment. Oh, okay. Uh, because they expect whatever you put in there to settle. There we go. Uh, wait to dry, right? And then we wait to dry. All right, so this is taking some time to dry, about 15 minutes, and now what we're gonna do is cut it off, uh, form a little bit of the uh, handle, and then we're gonna turn around and rechuck it, and turn the bottom side, okay. the top side. Yep, let's do it. All right. back and forth and put up the bead. That's awesome. Nice clean finish. On the far side of this blank, you can see the black has traveled all the way through the blank, uh, through capillary action, up to here. Wow. Even went onto the bead. Yep, all the way up into the spindle. Interesting. And that's just because it's very... It's very fine it's pigment. Mixol is very fine pigment. Yeah, it's, one of the, it's real one of the watery. Pigments. Yeah. It's high, 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 uh, Viscous. Yep, okay. and with alcohol, uh, it travels fast. Okay. Okay, that's much better. And you did that just because it wasn't smooth enough? Yeah, I wanted to get smoother, better surface finish without tear out. Right. That uh, beating and parting tool is some tear out sometimes. Okay. All right, now we're going to take it down, cut it off. And make the stem a little thinner. Yep. Set it off and give it some more to paint. And finish the very tip. All right, because I'm not getting precious about uh, finishing this, or because I'm going to turn it around, I don't have to be really special about finishing the very tip of the top. I can just use a parting tool, and then I can uh, sand down the tip of it once I turn it around. All right, so now I'm just sort of snugging this in and I'm going to press the, the top against the shoulders to make sure that it's nice and true when I try and turn it again and then tighten it lightly. I don't want to tighten this thing down too much. I'm not going to be uh, making it fly off the lathe because I'm not going to be doing any more heavy cuts. Uh, so this is pretty safe to lightly hold it. Well, you have a tenon. Yep, you got a tenon. You want it to be secure, but you don't need to... You don't have to hurt the paint. Don't, don't have to hurt that paint job. Right. 
Yep. And actually, you're, you're not putting a, any more lateral pressure on this. Nope. Tip here. Right, so it, it doesn't right. matter that much. I'm going to decorate the top, but I like to I like to have a, a as above, so below type thing. So I try and keep the same decorations. And here's another example of the uh, capillary action where that die came right through the end grain. So I'm going to use this uh, texturing tool again, the knurling tool, same spot, same orientation as much as possible. Put a spiral on again. You said you're doing a small rotation with your hand, with your wrist there, right? Yeah, a little bit, just to get the, yeah. uh, the spiral gets just a little bit more uh, pronounced Very if nice. you rotate the tool. Okay. All right, last thing I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to try and replicate that flower pattern right on the top of that onion. I like the way that looks. like the other side. So this is pretty cool. You're um, duplicating the designs on the top and the bottom. Not that anyone's going to notice mm -hmm. big time, but it makes me happy. Mm -hmm. Alright. That looks pretty good. Outstanding. I love right there the flower. Let's sand that a little bit. Sand it with 400 just to uh, get the burrs off. Don't need to do any heavy sanding. Just make it. All right, I've got my banjo right underneath uh, so it catches the drips. And I got a little drip catcher. So I don't like drips on my, on my lathe. So first coat goes on. It's pretty light. And then I do a second coat. Time to dry it the rest of the way. Here we go. We're going to finish up our finishing job on this, and we're going to try and get it mostly the same. Nice thing about these nail brushes is that you can get into the details. You can really get right in there. Looks good. So I uh, came across this mica pigment idea. Scrolling through reels. Scrolling through YouTube shorts, I came across some uh, nail polish videos. So mm. I'm basically doing nail polish mm, okay. on my tops now. All kind of resources out there. I think we're gonna have to call these disco tops. They're so shiny. They like really just really jump out at you. They're gorgeous. Really pops. And you don't have to be super precise with this stuff. It looks good even if you're making a mess with it. Last one. Here we go. Okay, now we're gonna let it dry for a little bit. 
All right, we're ready to take this thing off and see if it spins. Looks pretty good. Let's, let's see it. It's got a good close examination. Very shiny, shimmery. Love it. Let's see if she spins. Okay, let's see if it works. That's pretty good. That's what we like to see. Well, Bill, thank you so much for inviting me over today. I really appreciate it. I'm glad you came. Yeah. I learned a whole lot today. And I love how the members experiment with different colors and textures and it really came out good. So, all right. And that wraps up this episode of Bob's Woodshop. Catch you on the next one. Bye-bye.